Apple just released iOS 17.2 with a ton of big new features. Here's everything new. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and as I said, Apple has just released iOS 17.2 to everybody. I'm going to walk you through all the new features, including the new journal app. There are new widgets. There's just a ton of stuff going on here. This is a massive update. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Before we do, I want to thank our sponsor for this video, Setapp. So here we are on my iPhone 15 Pro Max running iOS 17. Point two. So the update came in for me on the 15 Pro Max at 6.39 gigs. This is what we were looking at. Uh, it didn't take too long to download though. There's going to be a lot of congestion if you're downloading this at least on launch day. The first thing to check out is the journal app. Apple had promised this would be coming later in 2023 and Apple made it by the skin of their teeth. So first this can be protected with biometrics such as face ID or touch ID depending on the model of your phone. So the basic stuff here is we can see all of these different um, prompts that I had put in, all my different entries, things from Halloween, places that I've gone, photos. These can be pulled up, you know, swipe through the photos. You can kind of get like in-depth looks at the maps, like where you had visited, all these different things. You can add audio, photos, videos, locations, all of this different stuff. When you tap on the plus button, there's these prompts here at the bottom. So based on stuff that you did, it reminds you there's private access to these suggestions. Nothing is processed elsewhere. It's all locally here on your phone. Um, but yeah, basically recent moments you've had, places you maybe have visited, all that kind of stuff is pulled in here and kept really nice and neat. You can create a new entry, type anything that you want, or there's some suggestions uh, that it may want to prompt you, such as like what's something that made you smile today, uh, take a look around, take a picture of something you've overlooked, what did you notice about it, those types of things. You may also get alerts. So here's one here. So new journaling suggestion, morning outing to Cafe Armour, um, or are known. So it can give me a chance based on like what I had done to add a new entry to that journal app. Otherwise, this app is a little bit basic. You know, I'm not going to go into all the functionality because I have a whole dedicated video to it. But yes, the journal app has arrived here with iOS 17.2. Next, let's look at the action button. So I'm actually going to go into the settings app go down to where the action button is, and you can see right now I use a shortcut, but there's a new option with iOS 17.2 to use it for translating. You can easily translate phrases or have a conversation with someone in another language, so press and hold to activate that button, and now it's gonna be detecting the language and translating it in basically real time here as I talk. So if you're talking to someone, this can translate. Multiple different languages are able to work here, and just tapping it can just jump into the translation app directly. So a new option here. Overall, I really like this interface. Nothing else has changed here with the action button, but yeah, new option for translating. AirDrop. Now we had last time Apple allowed you to use cellular. Uh, we also had talked about bringing devices together and how that is fine to leave enabled for things like name drop and passing off information. It can easily be done securely. But with iOS 17.2, Apple says you can share more things via AirDrop, including boarding passes, movie tickets, and other eligible passes that are stored inside a wallet. One of my favorite features coming to iPhones has been MagSafe. Just allows you to charge by placing your phone on these like magnetic pucks. It can do a bunch of cool things. Apple also introduced standby mode so you could use this horizontally with information being displayed. Well, with iOS 17.2, Apple is adding some new features. Basically, Qi 2 is being unlocked on the iPhone 15 series and iPhone 14 and iPhone 13 series will also work with Qi 2 charges. So ones like this are actual MagSafe certified through Apple and gives you up to 15 watts of power. Qi 2 chargers will be the first Qi enabled chargers to also deliver up to 15 watts of power and won't require a certification through Apple. So we could actually see some lower price tags and the first Qi 2 chargers should start to arrive by the end of the year. I swear I'm not going to spend the entire time here in the settings app, but people are excited about this one. Apple will finally allow you to change default alerts. You could change the different alerts for various things, but it could not be for everything. So now we get a new default alert tone, so tritone, antic, cheers, whatever you want it to be, or even custom ones like ones you've purchased through Apple's you know, iTunes store or tone store. So lots of options here for default alerts coming with iOS 17.2. Inside of the music app, Apple has a new favorite songs playlist. So any songs that you have ever favorited will automatically show in this one playlist. Very handy to find everything that you've loved over time. I love this. 
this is huge. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to get the collaborative playlist that we had uh, heard might be arriving and actually was in some of the earlier betas of iOS 17.2. Some say that it's because Apple actually is trying to crack down on some abuse that may happen uh, just by being able, people being able to add to your playlist a bunch of times and spam your phone. So that's being kind of looked at and may arrive in 17.3. If you had already created a collaborative playlist and it's in here on your phone, you can still use it, but you won't be able to add or modify that playlist. One more thing for Apple Music, this is nice. So here we are in focus mode settings. So if I go to something like sleep focus, now say I like to play white noise in my sleep focus, that could really skew your Apple Music like rankings and suggestions because you know you really like this sleep noise track through Apple Music. But now we have a new filter option. So if I tap on filter here at the bottom and go to music, we can turn off music history. So listening history can be disabled or enabled on a per focus basis. So that way if you go to bed every night, listen to a playlist of sleep tracks or something, you don't want that to skew as like, oh, one of your favorite tracks is waterfalls. Uh, you can turn this off. So this can really help preserve your listening history and suggestions through Apple Music. Inside of the camera app, we now have support for spatial video when we are turning this toggle here on. So you have to turn your phone sideways to actually use this. It won't work vertical and you do need some light and you have to be a little bit away from your subject, but you can turn this on. It's going to capture at HD, so 1080p, 30 frames per second here. And this will be great for viewing these videos on the Apple Vision Pro set to launch in early 2024, probably likely around March. You can enable or disable that toggle by showing up by going into the settings application, camera, and then formats. And we have that new option for spatial video for Apple Vision Pro. If you don't ever plan on using it, turn it off. But I love the idea of capturing all this spatial video, getting a Vision Pro down the line, even if it's a few years, and then having this history of spatial video that I can look at. If I can hit timeout for just a moment, I have to thank our sponsor for this video, Setup. Now this is not part of the ad read or anything like that, but legitimately, do you guys know what I do every time I get a new Mac? One of the very first things, I install Setup. I've been a paying Setup user for years and it just keeps getting better and better. They just keep adding new apps that are so fun to just explore and are all included with your one subscription. They just added new ones for like managing uh, passwords, for transcribing speech and working with PDFs. It's really cool. So power up your workflow with 240 plus apps for daily tasks all under one subscription. Get set up and enjoy access to a hand-picked selection of vetted apps for Mac and iOS. Find apps in moments with Setup's AI-based search and tackle tasks like Mac maintenance, editing, writing, design, money management, and more. Try Setup free for seven days. There's a link down below in the description or you can just scan this QR code that's on the screen. Do that, it's way even easier and faster. Thanks again to Setup for sponsoring this video. Spotted by 9to5Mac, there also is a new option to use the iPhone as a receiver for Vision Pro. Basically, it would allow you to cast whatever you're looking on Vision Pro over to your iPhone screen. Lastly, here in the camera app, Apple says that they've made improvements to the 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max when using that telephoto lens, and it'll actually be faster on focusing on small, far away objects. Here's one of my favorite new features that Apple had promised and now has delivered. It is health data access for Siri. It'll work here on your iPhone as well over on your Apple Watch. So let's go ahead and we can try this out. How many steps did I take today? There's our option. Try another one. What was my blood sugar yesterday morning at 8 a.m.? There we go. Gives me that range from the eight to nine time really cool so you can access any of your health data whether it is things like your uh, your fitness data your exercise rings uh, i haven't done anything yet today but how much do i have left on my exercise ring today okay well you didn't really need to point it out but yeah i still have a lot to go 27 minutes remaining for my exercise ring so lots of health data that you can use here just anything that's in the health app whether it is in my case like blood sugar readings it could be when your next cycle may start all of that can be pulled up via siri also relating to Apple's digital assistant, if you are using maps and you are navigating, Siri can now give you your ETA and your altitude while you're traveling. Let's look at widgets real quick. Apple added four new widgets here. They work both on your home screen as well as when in standby mode. So we go down and look at the first one would be weather, which is here at the bottom. We have our typical ones that we saw before, but we have new ones for details, daily forecast, and sunrise sunset 
all new with iOS 17.2. Then if we go back, we can also check out one more widget, which is the clock widget, which happens to be, uh, you know, here at the top under C, C for clock. Uh, there's a new digital option. So we had all these before. Now there's a new digital clock. I love the look of this one. This is really nice. So new digital clock widget in 17.2. Since we were talking about weather, just briefly, if we go down and look at something like the wind, uh, specifically wind actually, they've added the map details to this view. So all this other information was here before, you got like a 10 day forecast coming up, but if you're on today's date, there's a new map embedded here. When I looked at my old device on 17.1.2, there was no map added when looking at the day's data. So you can view it up standard here inside of the weather app by pulling up the map and uh, showing what you want to see, like what you want to actually uh, view, like so there's a wind here, but it's now shown in line on the actual wind details page. Here inside of the messages application, you can now go back and actually reply just with a sticker from this little tap back menu type of thing, really handy so I can tap on that, pull up a uh, sticker, could be a car, um, could be any of the stickers that you've created or third party stickers, you know, emojis, can be memojis, anything like that can be added as stickers just in line by tapping and holding and tapping on with stickers. Speaking of the memojis, let's go back here and go to the memoji app uh, because we have some new options for the body of your characters. So if we find one, tap on the three dots, let's just go to edit, we're looking at face, uh, skin, hairstyle, all of these, but there's also a new option for body. And with body, we have new options for things like waist, chest, shoulders, all of this that you can modify that best represents you or your best you, whatever you feel like putting, you can customize these here. So these are likely people in speculating like for Apple, like Vision Pro coming down the line, these are gonna be you know, somewhat visible there. So new body options for Memoji. If somebody were to respond to one of your messages with something, uh, let's say lewd, uh, Apple has a new option to censor that. So basically this is the people would send you photos before and they could automatically be blurred, this sensitive content warning. Now it'll apply to stickers. So when somebody does reply back with a sticker, if it is something inappropriate, that can now automatically be blurred for you. So you don't just see it right away and it's an actual option for you to view it rather than just letting it come in and uh, you know, be assaulted in the eyes. If you want to enable or disable this for yourself, go to settings, then screen time, then down to communication safety. It's going to basically give you the idea of what this is. Hit continue, share with Apple if you like, but you can turn this on or off on a per device basis if you want to use this or not use it. Finally here, Apple did add a new option for contact key verification inside of messages. So I went to settings, then my Apple ID, and then I scrolled all the way to the bottom and there's contact key verification here. You can turn this on if you'd like, it'll give you a walkthrough that'll basically help you ensure that you are speaking with who you believe that you're speaking with to verify their identity in a very secure way. The one caveat here is that all devices do have to be set up. So if you hit continue, it's gonna require that every device that you have, um, like my Apple Watch here, needs to be updated before this will work. Apple has also introduced the Sami keyboard. There is new rainbow text when creating contact posters. There's a new fast fade option when using Apple Books that allows for faster page turning animations. And there's a new local awareness option for emergency alerts. Apple says you can use your approximate location to prove timeliness, accuracy, and reliability in the case of an emergency. You can find in settings, notification, emergency alerts. There are a few fixes here as well. The two that I kind of picked out, Apple says there is now a fix for charging in certain vehicles, most likely GM vehicles, after patching the issues with wireless charging in BMW uh, vehicles in one of the last updates. And Apple says there has been a fix for the Wi-Fi slowdowns that you may have been experiencing. So that is patched here too in iOS 17.2. So that's it. That is basically everything that is new here. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. You can start downloading this right now. Let me know what features you would like to see in an upcoming update. Drop it in the comments over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU or on threads at Andrew O'Hara 941. Otherwise, stay tuned. Got a lot more videos coming your way. Thank you again to Setapp for sponsoring this video.